So, Minister, this question is in relation to the overage exemption for the ECCE programme. And if you can please, um, I suppose, give some explanation for the high level of refusals for this exemption, because it does cause a lot of, I suppose, stress and anxiety for families that are looking for this. Thanks. Deputy, look, I, I greatly appre appreciate the anxiety of parents who seek an overage exemption from HA programme for, for their child, and the um, overage exemptions for HA uh, are uh, provided for by my department. They're governed by, by three guiding principles. Firstly, a specialist has recommended the additional time in HA. Secondly, the child will not reach six years of age before beginning primary education, and that's in line with the Educational Welfare Act 2000. And if a child has already availed of the full two years of HA, he or she will not be eligible for a further year. Um, and where an application does not fulfil these criteria, the application uh, will be declined. Um, the primary reason for the refusal for overage exemption this year was that the child would be older than six when starting school if the exemption had been provided. Um, the National Disability Authority conducted a review of the way in which my department and the Department of Education were applying the overage exemption in 2018, and the authority's report concluded that the approach been taken by the department was in by the department was in the best interests of the child. And the National Disability Authority found children with disabilities were better served served by starting school with their peers and progressing to secondary school with their peers. So it's important to note that the overage exemption for the HA programme, it was never intended as a mechanism to delay a child's entry to primary school or to address uh, issues to do with the availability of, uh, of school places. The overage exemption was also developed when HA was a one-year only programme um, and where the very significant resources that come with, the, uh, with AIM, the access inclusion model, did not exist. And now all children have the option of full two years of HA with the wide range of AIM supports that are available. And I would encourage parents of children attending HA to discuss any concerns they might have as early as possible with the provider and with the AIM Better Start team. And um, obviously, details about the access and, and inclusion model it can be found on the aim.gov.ie website if parents want to find more information. Thanks. Um, thanks, Minister. Is it the case then that once the two years is completed, that regardless what the other circumstances might be, that, that child would not be eligible? for the overage exemption, because I have to say, up until now, that, and I could be wrong, but that wasn't my understanding of it. I thought it was supposed to be there for, I suppose, mainly for children who might have additional needs or might be struggling. As we all know, the waiting times now for assessments and for various therapies has just gone, like, it's, it's just gone ridiculous. So in a lot of cases, you will have services and a specialist saying that this child could benefit from, an, from the overage exemption, but they're still not getting it. So it's just one of the criteria mentioned was if they've done the full two years. So I suppose I'm wondering why, why is that there at all if, if you've done your two years, if you're not going to be eligible for it. There's a particular case I'm dealing with at the moment in Carlow that, you know, they, they really need this overage exemption and it's just being met with a brick wall. And I, I appreciate the stuff that you're saying about moving on and, and aim and everything, but in certain situations, you know, it's both the provider and the parents and also maybe a specialist saying this this is, is essential or this would really benefit the child and yet there doesn't seem to be any give on that. I'll come back in. Sorry, I didn't realise the time. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Deputy. Well, look, I suppose the... Um, the origination, the origin of the of the exemption was when AIM was just two. Uh, when sorry, when the HA program was just the one year uh, program, and there were certain uh, certain children who, because of, of of their particular needs, weren't able to get the wouldn't have been able to avail of the full five days. So they ended up taking three, and we allowed them to take it then over two years. And I think that is the origin of the two year rule in that particular situation. But look. I, I'd like to double check for the deputy, and I'll, I'll come back to the deputy on uh, on, on, on that uh, on that specific point. Um, but I think I, I, I do think it's worth noting, though, and, and from from my department looking into this in, in, in addressing your question, the main reason for the refusals this year is the uh, the, the uh, uh, they would end up attending school over the age of six, and that is the key reason why, and that's set out in the Education Welfare Act. Now, the, I mean, the reason I raise this question is because I we had a huge amount of people in the last number of weeks contact us about this, and I've always I've often dealt with queries about the overage exemption, and I have to say to date I don't know one person that's gotten it, 
And, you know, it is, I mean, maybe I'm just unlucky with the cases that I've been dealing with that people haven't gotten it, but it just, it does seem like it's kind of there and parents feel that they might be able to qualify for it, but yet then when you look at the criteria, it looks like nobody technically is going to qualify under that. So if it is the case, and I appreciate that you're going to check um, for sure, but could it be reviewed even, even in the context of this year? And I know we've sort of started into the whole school year and the ECC scheme, but could it be looked at, given that so many children um, obviously had to, everything closed up on the 12th or 13th of March and then didn't have the, the two or three months of preschool, maybe they were going to benefit from an additional year anyway, but given the situation we're in now, could it be reviewed could, and could it be looked at? And I'd like, if possible, the Minister to send you on the details of, of that one case, if that was okay as well. Thanks. Thanks, Deputy. Well, look, obviously, you're, you're always welcome to, to send on, on, on reps, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try and process them as, as quickly as possible. And I do know from looking over reps that I've gotten from various deputies, we do give a significant number, and even in the short time I've been in the role, I've given a, a significant number, and I'm sorry if, 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 if there haven't been your name on, on those particular reps, unfortunately. Look, we're about to undertake a fairly significant review of AIM in general. Uh, and the, the application, because and, and the, the, uh, it is a new programme, and just to make sure we feel it, it, it's working well. And I'm certainly happy that maybe as part of that we look at the overage exemption, how that, that's, that's applied. But, but I think that will be a, a kind of a, a higher level review uh, on the actual the, the application of the, uh, of the exemption. I think it's probably in that context that, that's the best way to undertake a, a review. Thanks.